ora and welcome back to our museum series. Today we get to look at the interesting world of plants and answer some questions like what are plants, what are some different types of plants and what are the different parts of a plant. Now before we get started make sure you hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one. Now in the rest of this series we got to have a look at the different specimens and how they're treated in the museum. So today we're in the field to see if we can find some interesting plants. There's a strange looking one. That's not a plant, it's collection manager and friend of the touring teacher Robert Vennell. Hey Laura, how are you? I'm good, what are you doing out here? I just thought I'd come out here and try to find some interesting plants. Would you guys like to join me? We would love to, but first thing, can you answer our first question? What actually is a plant? Well, plants are living creatures. You can find them almost everywhere you look on planet Earth. They include palms, conifers, mosses, ferns, flowers, and they belong to the kingdom Plantae. Okay, so what about the different parts of a plant? Humans have a head, a body, and limbs. What do plants have? Well, I actually got an example right here to show you. So just like the human body, uh, plants have different parts that all help them have a job to do in helping the plant grow. And so the first part is the roots. So these help anchor the plant in the soil and stop it from falling over. And they also absorb water and nutrients, and that helps the plant to grow. Next is the stem. So this part of the plant supports it and allows it to grow up towards the light and also takes some of those water and nutrients from the roots and brings them up to the leaves. Now the leaves are a really important part because they're like miniature solar panels and they take the energy from the sun and they turn it into sugar and food for the plant. It's a process known as photosynthesis. That's great, but looking at these plants around us, I can see they all look so different. Do you think you could show us these different parts of a plant on some different examples? Yeah, sure, why don't we go have a look? Great. So here we can see a few different examples of roots. You see this really big chunky thing here? That's one of the roots of this tree over here. Um, so that big, big root will branch off into lots and lots of little roots and they'll all be soaking up water and nutrients. If you come back over here, now where the track's been cut away, you can see all these little tiny bits. These are all the roots as well. So sometimes they can spread out and be a big mat of roots all soaking up water and nutrients. So here we can see a few different types of stems. Um, so you can, can have really thin and sort of bendable stems, or if you look over at these examples here, you can have really thick, big, large, woody stems. Um, when they get this big, we call them trunks. So if you look around the forest, um, basically everything you see that's green is a leaf. Um, so this is one example of sort of simple oval shaped leaf, but you can also have leaves like this that are sort of shaped more like your hand. Or, different again, this is another kind of leaf, big long strap like leaf, but they all do that same job of taking the energy from the sun and turning it into sugar, turning it into food. Because leaves are so valuable, um, some plants want to protect them to make sure that animals aren't going to eat them. So you see in this lance wood, you can see that all along the leaf they're studded with these little thorns. It's very leathery and it'd be difficult to be to eat. Now we don't know for sure, but one idea is that maybe they evolved these thorns to help stop moa from eating the leaves. Um, but there aren't any moa around anymore, so we can't really test that theory. <laughs> one of the really interesting things about this plant is that once it grows past about three meters, the plant completely changes. It's like transformers. So it starts to grow out big, soft green leaves like a normal tree. And again, one of the ideas is that maybe when these plants were little, they needed to protect themselves against those moa. But once they're tall enough that a moa can't reach them, then they can go back to just producing normal leaves. Okay, so are there different types of plants, just like there are different types of animals like birds, lizards and mammals? Yeah, so with plants we have four really major groups. You have the mosses, the ferns, the conifers and the flowering plants. Okay. So maybe if we have a look around we might be able to find them. Cool. So this is a moss um, and they're one of the most simple kinds of plants. They you know, the very first plants that moved out of the ocean to start living on land, they probably looked a little something like this. One of the things that mosses have, they don't have a, a vascular system. So that's a really fancy way of saying they don't have sort of plumbing inside their cells that helps them move water and nutrients around. 
So because of that, they can't get very big and you often just see them sort of small little mats or cushions like this. And you usually find them in places that are wet and damp and shady. Cool. So this is the second group of plants. This is a fern. Um, and they're different from the mosses because they have that vascular system. They can move water and nutrients around. And because of that, they can get quite big. You can often find little dots on the other side and these are the spores. So these are blown away by the wind and if they land in a good spot, they'll grow and they'll turn into another fern. So this really tall tree here, that's a conifer. And they're different from the ferns and the mosses because they've developed true wood. And because they've got wood, that means they can grow really, really tall. And conifers are some of the largest plants or largest living things in the world. This one here is a Cody tree and they grow to over 2,000 years old. The fourth group of plants are the flowering plants. So if you look around you here, basically every plant you can see is a flowering plant. Flowers are such a useful feature for plants that they've allowed them to take over the world basically everywhere you look. And so a lot of the plants you're familiar with like roses, cactuses, trees, shrubs, herbs, a lot of the fruit and vegetables that you eat, they're all flowering plants. Great, so based on what you've told us, I think I could walk around and figure out what the different types of plants are. Can you guys figure out what these plants are? Okay, so you've talked a little bit about how plants grow in the first place, but can you explain a little bit more about how new plants are made? Yeah, sure thing. So I'll give you an example with this flower. So this is the dandelion flower. And what happens is an insect or the wind will blow pollen onto this flower from another flower, and then that fertilizes the plant and it can become a seed. And that seed is then blown away on the wind or taken away by animals, um, and that becomes a new plant. Uh, now for some flowers, they produce fruit. So these are things like apples and plums and cherries, and they'll be eaten by animals, who will then go away and poop out the seeds, and that becomes a new plant. Wow, that's unbelievable. Well, thank you so much for taking me on this bushwalk today. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. I know I've learned so much, and I hope you guys as well. So thank you, and hopefully we can do this again next time. Sounds great. Thank you for coming along on this exciting adventure. I hope you learned as much as I did. And I want to say another huge thank you to friend of the touring teacher, Robert Vennell. He shared his knowledge with us today. And if you want to learn more about the native New Zealand plant life, you can check out his book, The Meaning of Trees. Click the link below to get your copy. Click through to see the other videos in this museum series, where we learn all about what museums are, and we learn all about insects. And if you want to find the resources to match this video today, click the link below to find them. And I'll see you next time.